long and prosper Star Trek I'm a star and I ain't been part yet Try par and see how far you get I'll be at your neck in just a sec I'll be at your neck, it's not a threat I don't pet, I'll get me some respect On the net looking out for a bite to let Big yard in a country where I slept I mean where I sleep Got a pretty painting in my own suite She's so sweet and I'm on heat I try to keep it neat and be discreet Big feet and it's making it hard to creep And I'm in too deep, it's hard to cheat Got sparks from the street but we hardly speak Still a hardy weep, I won't accept defeat I'm hard to beat, I cutting up the beat It's got an easy vibe, I want an easy ride As long as I can provide for the fam, I'm alive I'm the reside, where the hell I decide I've decided I'm the biggest bad thing alive Number Johnny Five, the prototype I'm photogenic even in the night With a lack of light, you see me shining so It shows that something's in my hand. Maybe you guys can see, huh? huh? About, I think, 11, 12 years ago, um, we were in a previous gym then, with quite a large place. Um, and I didn't really know who he was when he came in. He just came in, jumped into the classes, started training like anyone else. And as we started talking to him, we found out about his Arthur martial arts background, his background in kickboxing. As he got sparring, we saw how talented he was, and then we also got to sort of see how well he was picking up the other aspects of MMA. Yeah, it's definitely just scratched my eye there. I can see the mark. I'll just leave it like that for now. Right, all we'll do then, we've got a short time. I'm gonna clear the cage. Put some gloves on and then we'll just do a little spot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Made me look good though. That's down to you and your body, man. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? It's up to you. I'm saying it's up to you. If your body carries you, you're gonna look good. Uh, are you feeling fit? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> He's been a competitor since he was a little child, you know, and he's been brought up competing, 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 competing. So that brings, um, you know, it takes a lot away the fear and the nerves that maybe other fighters are getting, you know, which is a big thing, you know, and you'll see it in some fighters when they hit those moments sometimes. And, and the other thing, I think he just genuinely enjoys it. You know, generally he's, he enjoys the, pro, the entire process. So, you know, during the warm up, he's happy, he's singing, he's dancing. It's not something, you know, when it, when the cameras come in and they catch him dancing and that's not just a sudden thing and then he's back sitting in the corner nervous. That goes on through the whole fight camp, fight week. Uh, Logan Storley as an opponent, I think he's a, an exceptional wrestler. He's had, he's had a great career so far. Um, again, he's only had one loss uh, to current uh, champion. Um, He's very one-dimensional, but that dimension is like he's exceptional in that area. And I could almost be something can almost that can almost be said for myself in terms of um, exceptional in one area. That striking, you know, the stand-up for me, you know, I don't think anybody can can deal with that. But then, although you can anticipate what it's going to be that I'm going to do in front of you, can you stop it? Most people can't. I think he's a similar kind of person, but within the wrestling. Um, the only difference is I feel like I can stop that. Um, or another fight long enough to land uh, a clean strike and finish the fight.
too excited. I got too excited. And I'm late. <laughs> I'm some interviews in and shit. Yeah, yeah. Cheater. Just missed him. I don't know if I check my messages, I'm going to have everyone like, um, are you still coming? This is like the MMA reporters, so uh, I believe it's in front of a laptop. I'm going to do it. It's my first time on a desk. <laughs> was I was like, wait, where's the iPad? <laughs> and they're just like all on at the same time, like a scrum. They ask you in terms obviously ask you different questions about how you're feeling, blah, blah, blah. Uh, just one question for me. Uh, last time you walked out with Skepta. I want to know what's planned up your sleeve this time around. Uh, I've got to take it back. Um, and then i got to speak to the commentator team. I just got to do one more uh, with, it's like five minutes. Commentator, commentator yeah. one. Just I've come out because the scale's there too. So. It's upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, that's your seat yeah. right there. Yeah. Spin that around. Yeah. What's going to be the difference between getting up off the ground and storing it? takes you down. The difference is I don't find story. Great to see you, man. Have fun. We're going to do a nice 40-minute job. We know that 40 minutes we do is a stand of killer. Mm. And then we go into a sauna. We just in and out it and sit around and just <coughs> howl up and just keep sweating. Cool. Get a nice heat on and then wrap the fuck up. Stay outside for half hour chilled. Mm. And then back in again and see where we're at. And then we'll go check our weight. And then see where we float overnight. And then um, in a perfect world we want to do what, three tonight. I have a little bit more, but sorry. Best feeling. I don't think you understand. The best feeling. Yeah. Stepping on them scales and knowing that you've made weight. About to get some drink. Well, now he's weighing in uh, the official scales. Last night we did the the cut in the sauna. That was pretty hard. And then this morning he only had a little bit left. So um, that's it. To be fair, he pushed through the first bit. That was a hard bit. And this morning, he's felt good, he's got a lot of energies. One of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't wait. Yeah. I love it. Let's go. Let's go. I've known Michael since I was 14. That's when I moved to, to the UK. And he's been like a big brother to me, literally. Um, my style is similar to his, um, because I try to take as much from him as possible, you know. Um, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's been looking after me since I was 14, so he, he really is like a big brother to me. As a fighter, all I can do is a killer. Um, <clears throat> some of the best stops, uh, stoppages I've seen, not just in fights, but in training as well, uh, has, been, uh, has been by him. Um, he is hard work, you know. When he tried to get him either on the ground or striking, he's, he's hard work, so he's definitely a world, uh, a world champion level guy now. I've seen him since I was 14, um, pushing through injuries and being in the gym all day. People don't see the hard work that that fighter puts in, and he's been putting that work in. So he really does deserve every single bit of it, and the, the amount of shit that he gets, or the amount of crap that he gets on um, online, is, is from people who don't know one nothing about the sport, 
two who wouldn't dare to say the same thing to his face. Yeah. Um, so the amount of heat that he gets and keeps proving people wrong. So he deserves every bit of it. Michael is is basically um, he's highly competitive, which is except which I guess is a personality trait that you need to be exceptional in, in the sport he's in. So um, that works well for him. Um, he's very measured, so he's a measured person in the sense that he kind of gauges how he's going to move through the world and and uh, you know I guess overcome certain challenges and obstacles so I think that's extremely helpful and it's something that you'll notice or that I've noticed ever since we were kids you know he would every week play like Tetris and he wouldn't um, stop until he got through like level 10 I think is where it recycles back to one and it was like non-stop level nine you know level nine and then you know um, he'd always crash and then he'd be like, ah, and he would go back at it again. And that's sort of like the type of personality he has. It's just sort of like, boom, I messed up, I'm gonna reset and I'm gonna push through it again. And he'll do it as many times as he needs to until he'll, he pushes through and kind of breaks through into that next, next barrier. So I think those are sort of iconic hallmarks of his personality, I would say. <laughs> what, what, homie? Can we just talk about how whack you were? Yeah, man. We're talking about when you're talking about how you're a ashy moment. You can hear you. You can hear you. Oh, you. Like, you, you. Yo, this, this man's going to win by scratching his elbow. He has to pop his head and die. Like, ah. That's all of us. <laughs> all of, oh, you're going to ask his wife. That's all of us. <laughs> My thing is, you know, well, you know, obviously he's fighting for the interim belt and, you know, people would like to diminish that, that feat. Oh my gosh, he's, he keeps fighting these lower class fighters. You have to understand, you know, Storley's unde you know, undefeated, um, you know, and, and also Amosov, you know, he's, he's, Mike is not afraid of the challenge. Obviously things happen and things like that, you know, but, you know, he'll, he'll get a chance to prove himself over and over and over and it's, it's, it's time.
Michael's always wanted to fight the best guys on the planet in any federation, in any weight division. That's what we want to try and do. So we're always looking for the bigger and the better fights. I mean, we were asking for the Lima fight. Uh, it took us five rematches. It took us five fights after losing to him to get that, six fights to get that rematch again. We've got to look at it in a broad picture. We are prize fighters. If you pay us enough money, it doesn't matter who's on the other side, we're coming to fight. We're prize fighters, it's our job. So whoever gives us the biggest paycheck, whoever's the best name, that's our job to fight. Don't duck or dive anyone, take the biggest and the toughest fights for the most amount of money. That's how, that's how we want to be remembered. And that's how we like to fight and leave it on the line. I grew up around champions, you know, my, my family, I've got a lot of combat athletes as well and uh, the, the only thing that everyone has, you know, I'm not a champion so I can't really say, not a champion yet, uh, so I can't really say um, what it makes one but what I've heard and what I've been told and what I've seen from people is the hard work that everyone puts in and uh, our team is, is based on hard work so our coaches don't let us off, even when we have a bad day, um, I had I had injuries and he's like, where are you? Why are you not in? I was like, I can't walk, sir. <laughs> so uh, they they push us to the limits, and I think that's what makes a champion uh, the hard work they put in in and outside the cage. And and Michael's been putting that work in um, constantly for the past I don't know, for the past thirty something years. He's been competing since he was four. Oftentimes people try to compare the path to, you know, gold or the path to a championship or a title with perhaps someone else's path. And it's not productive or even motivating in many ways. And I think Michael has a healthy perspective on that. He kind of, again, has that measured personality where he understands that his journey is unique, his journey is, is his own, um, but he absolutely deserves it. Um, he works hard, he's focused, um, and overall he balances that out with, with the lifestyle that he wants to live. But just, just that, being able to push through and get to this point is something that we're all like extremely proud of. I, was, I know there's a lot more of him to come. I, you know, I think he still hasn't reached his potential. You know, yeah, and I can, I'm 100% on that because I've seen at times um, in the gym the level he can get to, which sometimes he hasn't quite shown in one of his two of his fights. And I really, really believe there's more of him to come.